This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, a better route planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at Ionti Dahl, and behind me here you see Nissan X Trail E Power E Force, it's called. So, this is, um, well, it's a fossil car, but it has two electric motors that runs the wheel, and then the fossil engine cannot drive the wheels directly. So it's like actually a diesel train in a way. But yeah, so why the heck do I test this? Well, because actually for the longest time I wanted to do a consumption test. You can say, yeah, practically it becomes a range test, but I want to know how efficient are these fossil cars when it's cold outside? And what about when it's wet outside or when it's warmer? I mean, does the, does the consumption change that much? And then how is the car affected by speed? So we're going to apply the same test procedure that we do with fossil, I mean, with electric cars, which is that we will drive at 90 kilometers per hour and then 120 kilometers per hour. So, yeah, right now the car is actually on, but it's it's acting similar to a uh, to a plug-in hybrid that it has some waste heat in the engine, so it runs the heater, but the engine has stopped. I can show. Let me just check here. Yeah, <laughs> it's minus 12 degrees Celsius outside but the heater is still blasting in. So uh, let me try to explain quickly what this means. Uh, so it has a fossil engine in the front. It has one electric motor in the front axle and then another electric motor in the rear axle. Now, now, now the fossil engine kicked in because I guess the, the temperature and the coolant and everything was too low. So it needs to, <laughs> yeah, actually also it needs to generate heat. Uh, this car does not have a heat pump. It does, ha does not have PTC heater. So the only heat into the cabin must come from the very uh, inefficient uh, fuel burning system. So here you see, E power badge and then E4. Yeah, this is kind of funny. It's a E4. Wait, how, how do you read this? It's E4 oars. E4 oars. <laughs> but this means the all wheel drive system with the electric drivetrain involved. So, Matt, this is so weird to see me driving a freaking gas guzzler. But uh, yeah, I, we, we need to break some egg to make omelette. That is my point. Let's get inside. Oh, let me through. Voila! Yeah, nice. Do you like this shit? Wait, wait, wait. The, the exhaust is coming into the car. Shit! Uh, okay, here, here, see in the back. Oh, no, no, no! I get exhaust inside the car. What the heck, man? Oh, shit. So on this display, you see that the engine is running right now and it's charging the battery. And here is the battery. It's tiny. 2.1 kilowatt hour only and uh, it's uh, 1.8 kilowatt hour usable capacity. So it works just like a little buffer to give this car some EV-like uh, driving experience with instant torque and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, what else is it? Yeah, I also use car scanner. So car scanner will show you that right now we are at 1,500 RPM. This is what I see when we are idling, we'll run at 1,500 RPM. If I trot a little bit here, you see that the RPM goes up and then here we have some other numbers. Uh, this one supposedly is engine fuel rate, so that's kind of high. 1.5 liters per hour. I've seen when uh, diesel cars idle, they, they consume only uh, 0.6 liters per hour. But I guess if, if we will be in some kind of... Wait, it stopped charging the battery now. If we will be in some kind of camping situation, the engine will turn on and off periodically. So then the average will not be 1.5, obviously. Here we have temperature in the coolant, temperature in it, so it's considered that uh, the engine is nice and warm now. So we should have optimal temperature for getting the lowest consumption. And then here is the catalytic. Oh, this one will go up once we start driving. So as you see, outside temperature, minus 12, what? Huh? it's not 12 degrees, it's minus 12 degrees. <laughs> what the heck, man? Okay, and I, I see now the engine shut off. And then you can see here, suddenly everything went zero. So now it's just sucking heat from uh, the system to heat up the cabin until the temperature drops enough so that it needs to fire up everything again. So, um, hmm, actually, I think this is a good opportunity to test the, the electrical range because um, there is a button here when you press this one, EV mode. You see, in EV mode, you will then have uh, pure EV. You will, it will try to drive on electric uh, and it's running it on the tiny, uh, let me just run it, yeah. 
it runs it on this tiny battery. So we should test how far can you actually drive on EV mode. But then I think in order to not mess up with the HVAC system, we need to turn off HVAC and then just yeah, freeze a little bit because I think the test won't be too long. So let's do a little range test, shall we? Uh, reset and then, okay, let's go. Ninja mode on. Okay, look here, switch over this one, NG flow. Okay. Oh, 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 careful. Don't accelerate too hard because otherwise the engine will start and then we might not be able to run EV mode again. Okay, so it actually runs on all-wheel drive. Hmm. Okay. Uh-oh, uh-oh, 70% battery. Oh, it's dropping. Wait, how much? 300 meters? The fuck? Okay, okay, okay. Go over there, go over there. Uh oh, it's it's an 80 zone here. We are slow poking, I have cars behind me. But I don't want to uh, hammer too hard because if you just, like, I have maybe 10% throttle now. If I use more, then suddenly uh, the engine might kick in and then suddenly I'm not allowed to go into EV mode. So it's kind of weird. So we have done 1.8 kilometers. Oh yeah, 1.9, come on, go, go. Damn, massive range on this tiny battery. It's like a, it's like an EcoFlow battery where we have even some downhill. Oh, <laughs> barely legal. We are cheating a little bit, but okay, whatever, whatever. It still counts. You know, this is probably for, let's say, uh, uh, kindergarten runs. Just uh, drive in the, the, the few kilometers before you drop off your kids, then you turn on the ninja mode and then, yeah. So, oh, 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 no, 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 shit. That's it. 2.5 kilometers. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hammer time. Okay, now we're doing the 90 kilometers per hour test. We will, uh, yeah, maybe we'll just go to Strandlich and back again to get a, a long enough uh, loop. So, yeah, I have to cruise at 95 kilometers per hour in the speed, though. No wonder why the Nissan people are driving so slow. Wait, if you have a Norwegian driving a Nissan, does that mean he's a Nissan? <laughs> okay, but let's see now. So if you switch here, you can see that uh, the engine is running right now. It's charging up the battery and also driving the wheels. But we're coming to a downhill. Will it cut the engine? Let me see now. Okay, now suddenly it's regening. Okay, so but the engine is still running and it's regening down here. You can also see here representation. It's a slight regen. Uh, see here, but I guess maybe uh, the system wants to charge the battery, so the engine is still running for some reason. Hmm, interesting. Ah, oh, shit. I was gonna check the weight of the car, but they have some uh, control for buses and trucks now, so uh, yeah, we'll skip it. It'll be way too cluttered over there. Oh, yeah, now it cuts the engine when we go downhill. Yeah, you see, it's zero over here. And let's check Miosa. Oh, uh, okay, a little bit of wind. I'm not sure which direction. Okay, pretty cool. I, I think I will just turn around here, yeah. So see, now when we are just cruising, the engine we're running at uh, 2k RPM, it seems to be the, the standard uh, when it's driving. So 1500 RPM is just for uh, idling or stationary. And then, yeah, but if I try to accelerate a little bit, you see, then it goes up. But the interesting part is that uh, it seems like this car doesn't need to have a gearbox. Uh, I guess the engine is directly connected to the generator. And then it will just vary the, the RPM based on load, not based on speed uh, uh, yeah, and gear, yeah, gearing. But I find it a little bit high that we have 2000 RPM. I think a, a gasoline car, if it's running on sixth gear, it should be resting at around 1500 RPM. But I guess uh, this is a three-cylinder, 1.5 liter uh, engine, so maybe 
uh, Nissan engineers figure out that the 2000 RPM is uh, the most optimal way of doing it. So uh, I guess we'll see once we get back to the starting point what the consumption will be. All right, 90 test in minus 10 degrees Celsius. Wow, 7.5 liters per 100 kilometer. It's supposed to be 6.4 according to, uh, well, the manufacturer. Uh, I guess you can only achieve that in, in city maybe. Okay, let's see how thirsty the car becomes at 120 kilometers per hour then. All right, we're doing the 120 now and uh, yeah, you see that the RPM, oh, okay, it was higher, but now we go downhill. Oh yeah, will it cut off? Let me see, oh, let me see, okay. It was a slow throat in the left lane, you had to accelerate a bit. Huh, you see, yeah. So even if it's going faster, it seems like the lowest RPM is 2000. I wonder if that's the most efficient for this engine. That's why it chooses 2000 rather than 1500 or even lower. But okay, once it flattens out, it should then go up. Come on, wait for it, wait for it, there, 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 there. Yeah, okay. So you see, when we're cruising 120 kilometers per hour, we're talking about 2700. Uh, what else is you see? Uh, here we have, well, I guess based on the speed and the, the liters per hour, you could calculate how much fuel we'll be burning per 100 kilometers, right? Hmm. Oh, okay, now go slight uphill. Oh, and then the RPM goes up even more. Wow. I've seen, uh, yeah, when, I, when I floor it, I've seen 4,000 RPM as the highest one. So that's actually quite a narrow band. It means that it goes from 1,500 when it's stationary to 4,000 only. Whereas most other engines, they were redline at uh, six or 7,000 uh, RPM. 120 test, wow, 10.4 liters per 100 kilometer. What the heck, man? Why is this car so thirsty? Uh, okay, now let's check the weight. Well, I was gonna check the weight over here, but uh, not today, son, not today. Okay, let's just go home. Well, we're back at Dahl. Now it's uh, 7.16 in the evening. And you see we have zero degrees Celsius outside. Uh, we fill up the tank meanwhile, so that is a slight disadvantage. Uh, but I can at least show that uh, we have heated up the engine and everything. Uh, it was, uh, uh, was it? Yeah, it was actually a 49 kilometer drive from Oslo to here. So yes, now I want to know, when we have zero degrees versus minus 10 degrees, would we have significantly lower consumption now? Or should it be consistent? Well, let's find out. All right, and then Mirosa right now, uh, almost no wind. Well, cool. And yeah, the days are getting longer. It's uh, 7.30 right now and we still have daylight. Wow, look here. Earlier this morning, it was 7.9. This is a significant difference. 8% better consumption. <laughs> I did not expect this much difference. Okay, we have to try the 120 test to see if there's also a same uh, difference there. All right, a 9.9 .9 liters per 100 kilometer. That is 5% lower than this morning. Hmm. Okay, but now I want to check the weight of the car. Okay, let's see, front axle. Oh, 1120, all right. The whole car. 2000, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, tank is around 80% full. All right, we're now at Cleavage. And, uh, you know, first I was thinking about doing some city driving test, but uh, I have a better idea. Let's hype a mile over here. So I'm going to drive a little loop here. I think it's around eight kilometer. And uh, the battery is, okay, whatever, full-ish. I'm now pumping up the heat because we will drive without heater and we will drive slow. And I want to see how, how low consumption can we possibly get. Okay, it's zero degrees Celsius, not ideal, but I guess advantage we have a high-ish battery. So I guess we should also try to run in the EV mode as long as we can to kind of compensate for the winter conditions we have right now. 
Okay, I just drive on the motorway. I was thinking about uh, taking the side roads, but they are kind of hilly. This one is nice and flat. But yeah, we just have the hazard lights on. So uh, people from behind, they can see that uh, we are driving dog slow. Yeah, so um, yeah, right now the consumption is zero because we're running on pure electric. But eventually the engine needs to kick in. <laughs> Let's see then, just for fun. Yeah. All right, the battery is so low that the engine is about to kick in now. We're going towards an uphill. Yeah, usually at 25% it says, okay, that's enough. Actually, this is weird. I got the message that we have too low uh, state of charge, but uh, the engine did. There, 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 now we started. You can see it here. Yeah, so now it started, okay. Oh, there was a little uh, change in, yeah, a little hunk, bump, bump. But now we are running on the wrecks. <laughs> a freaking huge wrecks. Okay, and then the consumption goes up. Okay, that's it. Three liters per hundred kilometers in possibly one of the most efficient ways. Okay. It is now 4.30 in the morning and holy macaroni, there's a snowstorm outside. Yeah, so this is the third scenario I wanted to test. How thirsty is the fossil cars when we have to drive in these kind of driving conditions? Well, we shall see. Let's rush over to uh, Dahl and hope we can get a good run there. Oh, shit. Uh, my only concern is traffic, not weather, because we have good tires. Nokian Hakapolita R5 tires. Yeah, so um, yeah, maybe at least if I can do 90 tests, that would be great. Yeah. We're finally here at Dahl. It's proper winter here. What the heck, man? What the heck is going on? We're almost in April and it's still winter. Well, okay, so to make the test as fair as possible, I've cleaned the car. It was first, it was covered with snow. So now it's uh, pretty clean so that it doesn't have any uh, aerodynamic disadvantage by being full of snow, or ice or anything like that. You see, we're now in ninja mode. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> right, we're on the move. So I'm trying to do 120 tests first because we have the lowest traffic now. It's almost five in the morning. So uh, yeah, fortunately the snowplow has been here not too long ago. That's good because it means that it will be, uh, it will take a while until it comes on the next cycle. And then also that means, yeah, we don't get stuck behind it. And also means that the, the road is fairly okay. <laughs> yes, they're fairly okay. Steering assist, uh, okay, pro pilot does not work. It cannot detect line, all right, that's fair, that's fair. Okay, let's see. Ooh, wow, it's not, wow, well, actually, it's minus four degrees Celsius. So, um, not too cold, but also not too uh, hot, uh, fortunately. It's around zero, it gets the most dangerous. So, um, yeah, fairly good driving condition over here, fortunately. Ah, shit, we get stuck behind the snow plow. Doing 35 kilometers per hour. Uh, this kind of messes up the test here. And you know, I, I saw them on the way uh, north, so I even waited around five minutes, hoping that they will pass by the time I get back here. But um, I'm, I'm thinking about doing a little trick here. I'm going to pull over at uh, this emergency stop or somewhere. Uh, or now nah, I think we might have to redo the test. Okay, out there. Wait, wait, wait. There, here's an emergency thing. Okay, okay. I think maybe good enough. We can just pull over here and wait, I guess five minutes wait will they clear this i hope they clear this right they should because it's like an emergency stop uh, place uh, yeah let's go in there wow 11.7 liters per hundred kilometer Ooh. okay let's try the 90 then okay still proper winter over here the other side uh, well at least near uh, Minnesun, uh, they uh, cleared out most of it and um, salted the heck out of it. But at least over here we have some, win uh, some uh, winter surface snow, yeah, some com compacted snow. So I guess that increases rolling resistance, right? And uh, therefore uh, fuel consumption. Okay, here at Minnesun we have wet roads or, well, I guess the road is covered with salt schmutzfest. So, uh, yeah, this is also a very typical uh, winter road or winter conditions. So it's a mix, I guess, of wet roads plus the snowy roads earlier on this uh, test. Wait, another convoy? Wow, these are quite frequent. Look, 
Yeah, so I was stuck behind it for uh, not too long. So now I'm just idling. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, can, we can even just start the engine. Yeah, just to compensate for it. <laughs> okay, I have to wait maybe, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes before I go again. Yeah. All right, 8.8 .8 liters per 100 kilometer. Oof. That is still the worst of the three scenarios we tested now. All right, we're back home now. So what do we learn from this test? Well, it turns out that fossil cars, they also get reduced range in winter. You know, I didn't, uh, didn't expect that because I was thinking, you know, in my head, fossil cars, they are so inefficient that they have so much waste heat. So it doesn't matter if it's summer or winter, you have so much extra heat, you can just heat up the cabin. Well, it turns out that that heat portion is just a tiny bit of what the car needs to consume for driving in winter or summer or whatever weather. So uh, uh, what we had, uh, uh, this case here was that we had cold weather and in general cold weather means more dense air and then fossil cars in general, they have quite poor aerodynamics. So when it's cold outside, okay, you have plenty of waste heat, but you have higher drag. And then also during the winter conditions now, we have poor driving conditions and then more rolling resistance or more resistance somewhere in the wheels because of wet road and then snowy. So, you know, <laughs> the difference between, uh, it's not even summer result, but the difference between the best case and the worst case is roughly 20%. That is huge. That is way more than I expected. I expected maybe 10% difference. I, I thought that fossil cars, they have quite consistent uh, consumption summer and winter, but I was so wrong. But, but okay, maybe it was the fact that this is, uh, you know, uh, it's partly electric is the, the e-power system. Maybe a pure diesel would be more efficient overall and have more consistent consumption numbers. Well, we should find out. I want to try to borrow a pure diesel this time. No uh, plug-in hybrid crop like that, just a pure diesel. Maybe a Volvo XC90, maybe some Volkswagen Tiguan or something, but it, it should be all-wheel drive because this is also all-wheel drive. Uh, and then some kind of SUV crossover, popular car in Norway. And we're gonna see a pure diesel. Will it also have these kind of variations in uh, consumption in different, uh, uh, different driving conditions or different weather? Yeah, that would be super interesting to find out. But yeah, it turns out that fossil cars, they also take this penalty. And recently when I tested Tesla, really, really well engineered car, as long as you have nice and warm battery from typically supercharging or just preheating from the garage, then you get also super consistent result. And then the difference between cold weather and then uh, not so cold weather around zero degrees is actually not that big in a Tesla. Well, that was a Model S, okay, Model S is more aerodynamic, uh, it, but it wouldn't be that much different if you try the Model X. But it has to be the latest and greatest technology, the alien technology with heat scavenging and heat pump and octavalve from Tesla. When it comes to other cars or the EVs, I mean, they might have a, a bigger penalty in, during winter. I've seen that, for example, in the EQS, which didn't have a heat pump and that was also the case in the old days with Tesla but you see traditionally EVs they take a quite quite big penalty I think worst case was something like 50% uh, higher consumption or half the range during winter but nowadays well-engineered EVs they might take only around 20% penalty in winter and that is actually right on par with this fossil car. So you guys remember when I did that um, full down trip with the Model S Plaid and I actually miscalculated towards the end because when you look at the stats afterwards, I thought the, cons the car consumed 2.5 kilowatt of heating. It turns out it was only 250 watt. 250 watt is really, really low and that is pretty much on par with a fossil car. So there you see that well-engineered EVs can actually match today's fossil cars in terms of winter, summer uh, efficiency numbers or yeah. So yeah, that was quite interesting. And then I guess we just have to see if it's gonna be a Volvo diesel or 
uh, an Audi diesel or BMW diesel, maybe maybe X5 or something. But we should try to find a car that is quite common. And I pointed towards Volvo because Volvo seems to be quite common, at least in Scandinavia, but also throughout Europe and maybe actually in the rest of the world. So we will see then with a the pure diesel, how is it going to be then? Huh? Because now people are going to, no, 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 this is, no, 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 this, this, the result is not true. It's something wrong with the e drive system or you were driving with e pedal or something. All these uh, fossil lovers, they're going to make up so many excuses. Just bring out the popcorn and then start reading the comment section. So that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.